Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the Shocklands. We know we are going back to Ravnica again. And original Ravnica had the Shocklands for the first time. Return to Ravnica had the Shocklands again. So it would make sense that when we go back to Ravnica, we also get Shocklands. Shocklands have gone up in price. They're anywhere between $10. I think the most expensive one is Steam Vents at $17. And they sell products. Uh, Modern is the format of choice right now for many players. Shocklands, having a lower price for them will help more people play the game. Now, this is a direct question from Vatai with Blue. Will Guilds of Ravnica have Shocklands? Mero said, maybe. Smiley face. Now, I'm reading this as absolutely because you don't say maybe and not have them. People would be disappointed, people would be upset, and the fact that it was in all the Ravnica sets and people are looking forward to that, you don't want to let them down. And that's kind of my point here. You do not want to let them down. You don't want to say maybe, smiley face, and then if they were not in the set, people would be really upset. So what is going to happen with uh, the Shockland prices? Uh, they will plummet. And the reason they will plummet is in a regular set, a lot of product is open. So much product is open. It's crazy, right? Drafting, sealed, especially when we're going back to Ravnica. RTR was one of the most opened and most produced product. There's still a reason you can find booster boxes for about $90 on any of the large retailers online before discount. With discount, you probably get for $85, free shipping, free Hello Kitty stuff. I know that they will be reprinted. It is not a question. It is an absolute. Now, what should you do? So if you have a playset of each, then just keep them. It's way too much work to sell them and then rebuy them in, especially if you have any inkling of playing standard. One of the beauties of reprinting the card is you do get utility of it. I think a lot of people forget the utility of the card. And the utility of it is very simple. You get to play the card. So that, quote, investment you made a long time ago is actually not going, although its cash value has gone down, you will get more utility now because you get to play with them again. I think that's fantastic. That's why I like reprints like Shocklands. If you already have your set of 40, then what else do you need to do? You can play any deck and not worry about the mana base, and that's incredible. Now, if you speculated on these Shocklands and you were like, oh, I'm hoping this goes up in price, I'm going to talk about two different versions of it and it will be the RTR and it will be the original Ravnica. Original Ravnica will be, its price will not go down too much, it will go down a little bit but people might, especially the foil copies of original Ravnica, people will be interested in buying them to play at their FNM because it is the most pimp version. This is the same reason that Derez, the comic book version, I think it's like 25 bucks, People like it. I mean, it's rare. So the foil original Ravnica lands, I could see it staying the same or even going up in price. The original Ravnica lands, I could see it going down slightly, but people still want to play it to seem, you know, hipster, right? Play the Otis and the more valuable version. Now, RTR, this they are going to tank. Um, they are going to tank hard. If this is reprinted in a core set in the same format where it's five and then five. So I don't think they're going to put all 10 of them in a, in one, you know, one booster box. Like I think it's going to be RTR, Gatecrast, and then some weird mechanic like Dragon Maze where one in every, what is it? One in every 18 packs, you can get a Shockland. So the RTR version, I would highly suggest um, dropping them. Uh, it It's very likely that there is a reprint. And if there is a reprint, it will always be the RTR version that takes the biggest hit. The Ravnica original one, uh, the foil RTR will still be like semi-good. 
Now there are other factors like different artwork. Uh, maybe if they had the same artwork or different artwork, it would affect the price. Some people like, you know, some people said that the original stomping ground was really, really ugly. And then at one point in time, the original Ravnica stomping ground was the same price as the Gatecrash stomping ground. And that happened for a few different shock lands because people thought the RTR had better artwork. That could still happen. That's all possible. But uh, overall, I would say I, I do own a bunch of them. But it's okay because I've used them and I've utilized them in the best way possible. And I'm actually excited to trade out of them. So the ability to trade them away now is very easy. So modern, in modern people don't tend to play four of these shock lands, but in standard they do. And if you have two formats that people want shock lands and you have, you're sitting on multiple playsets of each, you should be able to trade into what you want. So yes, your cards have lost value, probably like half the value. Maybe it depends on the shock land, right? Steam Vent was $5 when it came out. Now it's 17, 19. And Temple Garden was the most expensive one at 12, 15, and now it's 12. Overall, I do I do like these shock lands quite a bit just for utility. They're going to be really easy to trade. They're going to be in high demand. And should they be reprinted, you will be able to play with your shock lands again. Now, will there be a cycle of this happening? Will we return to Konzatar here or Zendikar? Maybe. So Zendikar, let me talk about Zendikar. The only oddity of this whole cycle is that Zendikar, return to Zendikar, did not have a did not have the fetch lands. They were in Konzatar here. The so it went from onslaught to Zendikar, to Kondra Tarkir, and then you would expect the enemy fetch lands would of course be put into the return to Zendikar, or battle for Zendikar. It was not. People were really upset. They were not happy. And now you could say they were in the set as the mythic of mythics and the expeditions, but that's, you know, I'm not going to parse terms on that one. So at the end of the day, they put it in Modern Masters 2017, the enemy fetch lands. I don't know why they did that. Uh, it seems very strange to me, and it doesn't make it didn't make any sense. But that being said, RT this Guilds of Ravnica is 95 to 99 percent guaranteed to have shock lands. Otherwise, Mero would not make the statement he did. Imagine two scenarios, right? Like he has. That's why like, when he picks a question to ask, people ask him probably thousands of questions a day. So he can, get, he can answer the questions that he wants to answer. And if he's picking this question and his response is maybe smiley face, then they're definitely in this set. There's, like, there's almost no doubt in my mind it's going to be in this set because what if he said maybe and people were really excited, they were looking forward to it, and then the answer was no. We saw how bad Battle for Zendikar turned out, and then over the Gatewatch. They're not going to do the same thing. They're not going to not reprint it, because it would upset everyone, especially given his statement. It would just be so ridiculous for him to make that statement, and then for them not to be... So he already knows. He already knows if they're in or they're not. He chose to answer a question... You know, he could answer any, he could choose any question. He can t take a question on, you know, cosplayers or community or social activism. Like, so, I mean, he chooses questions that he wants to answer. Simple, simply stated, they are going to be in the set. Uh, they are going to be reprinted soon. If you had extra copies, I guess you can move them, but I feel like it's too late already. This is as close to like a guarantee as you possibly can get. Uh, now, there's no guarantees because Battle for Zendikar, we all assumed that the enemy fetch lands would return to Battle for Zendikar. It made sense. We were in Ravnica. We returned to it. We got the shock lands. And I think overall, it will be, have a big price there will be a price crash on the RTR versions, 
but not on the foil copies. The foil copies of both versions should be okay. Also assuming that there's new artwork and, you know, because Ravnica has to change, right? The whole point is Ravnica now looks like Seattle. It's rainy and all the people have to wear raincoats now. So that was the big, you know, selling point of the new Ravnica was now it's raining. So the the guilds themselves should have changed in time, therefore we'll get new artwork. So assuming that we have new artwork, RTR will not have a premium if the new artwork is actually better. It is possible for the new versions of the card to be more valuable than RTR. But the older versions of cards, the Ravnica and the especially the foil Ravnica, the original foil Ravnica, I can only see that going up in time. Uh, I, I don't see another scenario for that type of card because people want to play the most expensive version at your FNM. They always do. Anyway, bye guys.